focus on taking the musculature to the most intense experience of fatigue. And then you want to repeat that. Today we're going to talk about why short workouts can be superior to longer workouts. My name is Dr. John Jaquish. I have a PhD in biomedical engineering. I'm the developer of a number of medical devices and fitness products. And I'm going to talk about a science-based approach to training that may be a little bit different, different areas of science. Uh, I'm not a sports scientist, I'm a biomedical engineer, so I have a significantly different perspective than a lot of the people that you see on YouTube. When it comes to how much time you spend working out, uh, there's obviously a lot of variation, there's a lot of different recommendations that you'll see. There's very few things we can say about fitness and health and the human body that are like unequivocal, right? When somebody says, is this exercise good? Is this other thing good? The answer is almost always, well, it depends. There's a few things that you don't have the well, it depends sort of situation. Workout durations are one of those things. Ultimately, the greatest stimulus that happens to the body is the most intense stimulus. So think about if you're building a callus on your hand. If you have a hard abrasion on your hand for a very brief period of time, you build a callus. If you have a hard abrasion on your hand for a long period of time, you'll tear your, your, your hands up, you'll be bleeding. Uh, if you have a low intensity, so low pressure on your hand for an extended period of time, you get a blister. And that parallels very perfectly with musculature. If you overexpose the musculature to stimuli, you just do too many sets or too many exercises, you go to failure too many times, uh, or you really beat up on the stretched range of motion, which damages joints. And that's a common problem as of recently because there have been a lot of people promoting the stretch range of motion. And it's been slightly over-exaggerated, but it's still really important. Focus on taking the musculature to the most intense experience of fatigue. And then you want to repeat that as often as possible. So there are many different approaches to doing this. So variable resistance is one of the approaches that I talk about because I developed a product that focuses on variable resistance. And uh, that in research delivers the absolute greatest results for strength and muscular growth. However, on top of that, I also do rest pause style sets. What's rest pause? And by the way, I didn't name that. I realize it's a dumb name. It's like, are you resting twice? Like what, what's going on? No, what's happening is you're taking a break from a set so that you can recover some of your cardiovascular ability and some of the muscle's ability to continue to contract under a high load. So let's say I'll do a set and 20 repetitions, strict form. Now, because I do variable resistance, my reps get shorter as I proceed. I go to complete failure. Let's say I go to failure five times in that one experience. Then I might take five to 10 breaths, depending on what it takes for my heart rate to start going down and my breath to come closer to normal, not to normal, but closer. And then I continue. And let's say I, I certainly can't do 20 reps, but I might do five. And then I can repeat that process so that I can go to fatigue multiple times in a much shorter period of time. So it's like a superset with little mini sets after your first main set. That is another way to massively increase the stimuli, get a more powerful experience to the muscle, and you're much more likely to elicit muscle growth. One of the things that I'm known for saying, I, I, I wrote a best-selling book, a Wall Street Journal best-selling book, weightlifting is a waste of time. Now, a lot of people were like, how could you say that? Well, notice I didn't say resistance training is a waste of time. Resistance can be variable, and that makes it much more powerful and usable by the 90% of people who quit within 90 days, which is the statistic of how quickly people quit their fitness program. And of course, they're not quitting because they got great results, they're quitting because they got none. Uh, and this is something that works 
for absolutely everyone. You always want that intensity. Another thing that I think has been distracting is some have promoted some studies and legitimately there have been some studies that showed that stopping your set far away from failure, what they call is reps in reserve. So let's say you did 10 reps, but you could have done 15, but it's okay because you're going to do more sets. So you just do 10 repetitions and then put the weight down and rest or whatever. For a while, these studies seemed popular and a lot of people had the attitude of it, it doesn't really matter how close to fatigue you are just as long as you're moving some significant amount of weight and doing it for multiple sets. And like to me, that was just like, wow, okay, so you're going to get better results by half-assing your workout? In life, that never happens. Is the guy who didn't run very fast at practice, is he the one that ends up winning the gold medal? Never, absolutely never has that happened. So when I read that research, I just kind of shrugged my shoulders and thought, I don't think that's correct. The good news is uh, those studies came out about 10 years ago. And ever since then, there have been a lot more studies that show the closer to momentary muscular fatigue, you, you get to the point where you just can't anymore. So that's, that's where you stop. And you want to create these situations with the most intense stimuli. So always train to fatigue and then even strategies to get you beyond fatigue. If you're lifting regular weights, use a spotter. Have them help you through the positive. So let's say you're doing however many repetitions and oh, you can't, you can't get it off your chest. You're doing, a, you're doing a bench press, you can't get it off your chest. You have one of your friends help you get it up and then takes his hands away and you lower it yourself. And then he can, so this is an approach to variable resistance that's just using a spotter. But that is going to allow you to go to fatigue, and this is so important, multiple times per set. You don't wanna do more sets per se. You wanna make each set more intense so that you get more stimulus with, with each set because with each set you do, your later sets just get lame because you're exhausted. You, you're wasted, you can't do it. So. You know, I see people sometimes towards the end of their workout, they're bench pressing something really impressive. And then the, the latter sets, they're, you know, they got like half the weight on the bar and they're not doing very many repetitions. And they're just kind of exhausted and, and they have a term for this. It's called junk volume. Don't do junk volume. High intensity, you want to, you want to stimulate the muscle as much as possible, which does not mean damage. Stimulate. So exhaustion over and over and over again in, a, in the briefest period of time. And then the growth happens while you're resting. So then you wanna focus on getting the proper amount of protein, which is one gram per pound of body weight, not body weight you want to be, body weight that you are. Now, if you're really heavy, if you, you've got a lot of extra body fat, you can adjust to imagine that your body fat was a 20%. Because a lot of studies, that determined one gram per pound of body weight. If you look at the body fat, if, if they measured it, but there's dozens of studies here, so we have a pretty good set of numbers. If you're right around 20% body fat, then you know, you're like the, the test subjects in the study, in the multiple studies that determined one gram per pound of body weight is, uh, is really the right thing. Now, of course, there also are some studies that suggest a little bit more, some that suggest a little bit less. Usually the ones that suggest a little bit more are from people who are trying to gain muscle and lose body fat at the same time. And that is a subject that we will cover in another video. Ultimately, with the short workouts, you just want to focus on intensity. So everything is a strategy to get the most intense stimulus into the muscle to trigger the most growth. If this video helped you, I want you to subscribe and follow. I'm gonna put out videos on a regular basis. I think they're gonna help a whole lot of people, especially if you're one of those people that doesn't just instantly grow from lifting regular weights. We've got the answer for you.